number one, fish where the fish are. So what I mean by that is, I'd rather you not be a jack of all social media sites, master of none. I'd prefer you to focus on a few and do them really well. So uh, as you'll see here, Snapchat as an example, I get this question all the time. Snapchat's one of the hottest social media networks out there right now. And people ask me all the time, should I be on there? Should I plant my flag there? And my point to them is, unless your market is ages 13 to 25, the answer would be no. And it's okay. Cross that one off your list. You are welcome. That is one site you at this point, unless your audience is there, don't need to worry about. Because if you are continuing to try to find the shiny new penny syndrome and going after every social network after every social network, this is the type of reaction that I get from speakers who try to be everywhere. So don't do that. You don't have to do that. You can focus on a few and just take care of those. Okay. So rule number two is get more lines in the water. So what I want you to do with, with those, uh oh, we lost a slide there, but I know them off the, off the top of my head. You guys will get that back for me. Uh, number one is Google Alerts. So I want you to set up Google Alerts for speaking leads. So I'm from Florida, so we uh, fish a lot. And the thing that my dad taught me is put a lot of poles in the water. The more poles you have in, the more fish you have the opportunity to get, right? So when it comes to generating leads, I want you to set up Google Alerts. How many of you, by raise of hand, set up Google Alerts for speaking leads? A lot of you. So just in case, for some of you newbies out there, what I mean by that is you can go to Google and go to google.com slash alerts, and you can set up so that when anything comes on and it's indexed by Google that says, say, uh, uh, conference requests or speaker requests or things of that nature, it'll actually get emailed to you. So my assistant gets emails every day from Google on speaker uh, submission sites that open up for speaking requests. And then we can go ahead and, and submit for those. Um, TweetDeck, which is a site that I use, or Hootsuite. So this is Twitter management now. So even if you're not a huge Twitter user, oftentimes meeting planners will open up their speaker submission sites on Twitter. So what I do is I use TweetDeck. Again, it's a free site, so write that down if you're not currently using it, or Hootsuite. And I put Call for Speaker up on TweetDeck, or again, Hootsuite. Both of them are the, use the same principle. And any time a tweet goes out on Twitter with the words Call for Speaker, and you see them, I have them in quotes, it shows up for me. And I've gotten speaking business off of that. So you can see right there, I remember I just did this the other day, call for speaker topic suggestions for your Weight Matters nat nat National Convention. So if that one fits for you, there's a lead. And they go fast. Every day there's new leads on there. Okay, so that's an opportunity for you to be able to generate some business. Uh, write articles and submit. So I uh, have been attending the National Speakers Association Conference every year, and I got this idea. Uh, from Ed Rigsby, for some of you who might know him in NSA. You know Ed, yes? And he talked about sub submitting articles to associations. They're always looking for new content. So if they don't know you yet, this would be good for, say, the Calgary Society of Association Executives. You can start by writing an article of value for them, for their members. So then they get to know you. And then the next obvious step would be to invite you to speak or to get you to speak. I did that over the last three years, and I've received about 12 events, including the CSAE which does eventually uh, beget more speaking business because you have decision makers in the room at these association events. So again, writes uh, articles. If you're looking for a huge directory, this is called associationexecs.com. I recommend your local chapter. So if Edmonton has a chapter or Calgary has a chapter, the more of you who sign up at one time for this site, I don't make any money or anything. This is just something that our chapter did. Um, they'll, they'll lower the price a little bit for you. And even if they won't, now I just said that, so that I guess they have to. Uh, you know, just tell them that I said so, and they have no idea who I am. But anyway, uh, associationexecs.com is the name of that, and they have a database, as you can see, of 80,000 different association executives or associations that you could potentially put your articles out to. Pretty good? And then the last one is collect emails when speaking. So this is one of those things that we as speakers have been doing this for a little while, always say to ourselves, gosh, I wish I would have collected the information of the people that I spoke for because our sweet spot is right here. Once people see you on the stage and they think you did a pretty good job, the speaking leads will come in from the people that are in the room. Okay, now we'll talk about staying top of mind with them in a minute. So this is what I do. 
I use this form. Now, I will give you a little secret here. Meeting planners aren't super excited about you putting eval forms at your event. So what I do is I make it value rich. So what I do is I put a ton of value in my evaluation and then at the, or at the, in my follow-up form. And at the very bottom there, I just ask for your information and if I can follow up with you. So it's like 90% value and 10% follow-up information. Does that make sense? How many of you do that by your raise of hand? How many of you wish by raise of hand that you did it earlier so you were building your database, right? Let's do that. Remember that a good database can be the lifeblood of our speaking business. So you got to make sure you're actively collecting the people's information that can book you. All right, so that's rule number two. Get more lines in the water. Rule number three is don't end up on websites that suck.com. That is an actual real website that has really terrible websites on it. And I actually um, decided before I went up here that I was going to look at all of your websites and now show you what I would consider to be the worst website at the CAPS convention. Yours? You're gonna, <laughs> are you ready to see it? I'm just kidding. I would never do that to you. <laughs> Relax. I would absolutely never do that. But I did check out some of your sites, and I did see some common mistakes that are frustrating meeting planners and people that are making decisions about you. You may not win the business uh, when they look at your website, but you could lose it. If a meeting planner comes to your site and doesn't see the things that he or she wants to see, they'll move on to your competition. So let me give you those things. These are six website musts. Oops. They seem to not be there, so I'll go off of the top of my head. How about that? Here we go. We'll go off of, now this is Waldo Waldman's site. He is a uh, fellow speaker in Atlanta, and he's got a really good site. So I'm going to give you the things that um, you don't want to do and the things that Waldo does really well. So first and foremost, you want to have your critical information above the fold. What I mean by that is so people don't have to scroll to find it. So you see with Waldo here, uh, let's see if this little... Guy works. Yeah, his uh, critical information, his phone number, is right there at the top so that you don't have to scroll to find it. Do you know how many of your websites don't have your phone number on it to call you? Come on, that's like rule number one. So write that down and make that change as soon as you get back to your business. Tell your web, you're going to have a lot of web designer stuff going on over the next 24 hours here. Get your phone number up there, okay? Um, if a physical address means something to you, then get your physical address up there. Another thing that I look for is I call the Forrest Gump phrase. Now, those of you who know the movie Forrest Gump, uh, he was a little slower, like myself. I'm from the South, uh, South and, and the States. And uh, so you need to tell us what you do in a way that I can even understand, or a Forrest Gump. So I call it the Forrest phrase. And this is something that speakers have a hard time with. Now, Waldo does a good job. Even though Waldo does so much different stuff, at the end of the day, He's a motivational keynote speaker. And if you go to anything on the web that has to do with Waldo, you'll always see motivational keynote speaker. Now, one little trick I saw when I first went to my uh, first NSA convention, I kept hearing humorous speaker, humorous speaker. I'm a humorous speaker. And I went back, and I'm, uh, Dan Thurman back there will tell you, I'm a nerd. So I went back, and I did a little test that I know how to do. And I checked to see how many people searched on Google for humorous speaker. How many do you think searched for that term uh, in the year 2015? It was in the hundreds. Not very many. How many people do you think searched funny speaker? Thousands. Get out of your own head. Nobody calls us humorous speaker. Okay, call yourself what the people who are making buying decisions call you. Okay, so I can promise you that Waldo probably would love to call himself more than just a motivational keynote speaker, but that's what he is, and that's what they search for. And if you go to Google and you do a search for motivational keynote speaker, you'll see Waldo at the top of the page. Okay, a couple other things. Video, whoops, sorry. Video, video, video. That is so unbelievably important in the speaking business, and it needs to be so unbelievably obvious. In the first three seconds, when somebody comes to your website, make sure they see your video. And if they don't right now, you got to make sure that they do. Now, another thing that I talk a lot about is social proof. And what I mean by that is it makes a meeting planner or an economic buyer go, oh, wow. Oh, she, wow, she did that? Oh, wow, she's a CSP, she's a Hall of Fame speaker, she's a bestseller, she's been on TV. You know, you've got to show your competitive advantages over your competition. 
And uh, some of the ways that I do that are uh, brands that you've worked with, testimonials from uh, well-known brands that people know about. Obviously, designations are important in the, uh, that meeting planners know. And then other things like that that you know put yourself above your competition. I call that social proof. All right, so that's something extremely important. And again, Waldo does a good job of making sure that when you're ready, you can pull the trigger and book Waldo for an event. Rule number four, don't let people forget about you. So someone may visit your website in January, but they may not be ready to book you until October. So how do you stay top of mind? Well, there's two ways to stay top of mind. You can collect info or you can connect on social media. So I'm going to give a shout out uh, to my friend Wayne in just a second, but I want you to write down <laughs> that failure equals when a prospect visits your website and leaves without giving you their information. So if you don't want to write that down, take a picture of it, remember it. But when somebody goes to your website and they leave and you don't get their information, then you're hoping they remember you down the road. And that's not a good thing. So this is what Wayne does, which I love. He asks for the information, right? So any opportunity that you can collect people's information on your website, it's a good thing. Now, of course, I understand in the meeting planner world, the bureau world and such, they don't necessarily want to give you their name and email address. So there might be an opportunity maybe for uh, a free download of some kind. Or again, maybe you can be a LinkedIn connection, but something that you can do so that you can stay top of mind with that individual. All right, because again, they may not be in buy mode when they visit your website. Uh, this was Miss um, Pibworth here. Is she in the audience here? Is she here? There you are. Thank you for the tweet. So you got a shout out, a website shout out. You're very welcome. She puts her social media icons up here. So that's another way uh, that you can collect people's information. I want to give you a best practice and she may um, use all of these, but with your social media icons, if you're not using the social media site, don't have the icon on your website. That's, that, that's the worst thing you could do. You're taking them away from your site and onto a page that you're not act actively using. So only use the social sites that you're active on, okay, and get rid of the rest. She also has a nice little download button here. She's trying to collect information here. Uh, she has a nice uh, call to action button here. Very nice, okay? Uh, make sure your website is mobile responsive. So what I mean by that, I'll keep it as simple as this. I want a meeting planner, I want somebody who can book you for a speech to be able to do this on their phone with your site and navigate it well. Check your video, see your speaking topics, send you a quick contact form to collect more information. Okay, it's gotta be super easy. The site has to change when they're on a mobile device, okay? And it's easy to get that done nowadays. So I want you, not now, but when you get out of here, take a break and go look at your phone and be real honest with yourself. Is it tough to navigate your site? If it is, get it fixed. You can go to upwork.com, you can write that down, upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K.com, and you can type in mobile ready or mobile responsive. And there'll be lots of people on there that for a few hundred dollars will fix your site and make it mobile responsive. And you can actually see the work that they've done to see if that's the type of mobile site that you want. Does that make sense? and it can go right to your site, whether it, you know, it can just be coreyperlman.com, they're on a phone, it changes uh, the look of the site, all right? Uh, rule number five, add video everywhere. So this is my homepage, um, and the first thing you see is video uh, on the website. And then uh, your YouTube channel. Make sure you've got a quality YouTube channel. Now again, I'm not super creative or good at designing my YouTube channel, so I had somebody do that for me. I went to Fiverr.com, that's another fun free or, uh, cheap site, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. For five bucks, I had somebody uh, design my YouTube channel page for me, and if I didn't like it, it was five bucks. It's a latte. I'll try it again next week. Okay, and you just keep going um, until you, you got something that you like. All right, so make sure that uh, your YouTube channel is something that you're proud of. Uh, LinkedIn, which is something we're going to talk about in just a second, but in your executive professional summary, great place to add your video. So make sure you have your video in all the obvious places that people can check out because they don't want to read you, they don't want to hear you, they want to watch you. 
you are a speaker, and that's the quickest and easiest way to sell yourself as a speaker. And then go live. So this is a new thing that we're doing all the time, uh, and a lot of my fellow speakers are doing. I know, I think uh, Dan's gone live a few times. I considered going live backstage there, uh, but it was too dark. But um, if you have a tribe, say on Facebook, you know, they give you the opportunity to go live now and to literally click a button. And, and Facebook is really uh, gung-ho on going live. They're doubling down on it. So anytime one of your people in your network goes live, it shows it to everybody. So you might get 100 views on a recorded video, but if you go live on Facebook, you might get a thousand views because Facebook's really pushing it right now. So we like to go live a lot and I'll do some of the ways I'll go live is I'll just give value. So, you know, a question I was asked earlier today was about the new rules of Google. What's Google doing in 2017? You know, I might answer that. I might go live on that. I might, you know, with my audience, if we had more time, I might click my Facebook and say hello and have everybody say hello and just do it or a quick behind the scenes, but be creative, have some fun with it, but go live. It's another opportunity for you to brand yourself, get yourself out there and get some video on. Uh, number six in these rules is uh, turn clients into friends. So I want to do a quick little activity with you guys. So I want you to write down your VIPs. So one, two, or three people who have referred you, who have booked you, uh, who loves you, who's paid you money, uh, whatever the case may be, but a good, solid uh, VIP client. Write at least one down. Now write down their birth date. Write down their birth date. Keep writing. Now write down their kids' names because obviously that's important to them, right? Some of you uh, read a book a long time ago like I did, uh, Harvey McKay, Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive, and he talked about 72 or 45. I can't remember the number of things you should know about your clients. Well, the same is true today. It does, nothing's changed. So we should know these things about our VIPs. What about their accomplishments, their hobbies, their passions? What, when they put their feet on the floor first thing in the morning, what do they think about, right? We don't want them to think that uh, they're, we're just, uh, they're just a bag of money to us. You know, they're, it's a relationship business, a speaking business. So I want to introduce you to Mary Stevenson real quick. Her birthday is May 11th. I sent her some chocolate bark from Sarasota, Florida, my hometown. She said it was the best gift she ever received. Uh, that year, and she, sell, and she passed it around to all of the people at her office, so I won the get best birthday gift of the year that year. She just celebrated her 10th year of being cigarette-free, so I actually wrote her a handwritten note telling her how much I, I appreciated that about her. My mom died of lung cancer. I understand the power of uh, that habit and the fact that she's been able to be 10 years smoke-free is phenomenal. She's a huge Alabama Crimson Tide fan, so I congratulated her on her 20,000 national championships in football that they've had over and over again. The Bible's her favorite book. She just became a grandmother for the first time. So she and I literally compete week in and week out for cuteness pictures of our, my kids and her grandkids. But I think I'm clearly the winner. I mean, that's just, you know, I may be a little biased, but... But bottom line is Mary and I interact with each other on a weekly basis and she's one of my largest clients. She's booked me uh, for three different speaking events and that's you know, more than, than five figures uh, in money. And, and that's a really important part of my business and to my family. And so how do I know all this stuff about her? You guys probably know by now. How do I know all this about her? Facebook, we're Facebook friends. So I wanna at least encourage you. I wanna make you think about converging the world that we live in where we try to be so private and stay everything out and then our business world. And I had to make this decision seven years ago, or whatever it was, that I was gonna allow business clients into my Facebook life. And I've never looked back. And I tell you, the, the positives so far outweigh the negatives. Now, do I talk about politics? Of course not. I'll either piss off 51 or 49%. And it's really bad right now in the States. But we won't go into that. Um, I don't talk about, you know, I went to Florida State University and in and, and, and the States were known as a crazy college party town. So I had to clean up my profile. Um, I make, I'm very familiar with the security settings. So if somebody tags me like this New Year's Eve, I have a big sign at a party that says no tagging on Facebook. You should do that, by the way, for your New Year's Eve parties. But last year, somebody posted a picture of me taking a shot out of an ice luge, which I only did four or five times that night. But he tagged me on it. And I saw it and I made sure that, that I got to untag myself prior to it going live. So it's things like that that you should be familiar with. But 
to be able to deepen those relationships with the people that respect and, and buy from us and our, our customers and clients, I just, I just think it's the, the world we live in now and why not take, take advantage? Even though I try not to take advantage, I just enjoy being friends with the people that I do business with. Uh, number seven, make LinkedIn your best friend. Uh, very, very important here for speakers. So I want you guys, this is my favorite site, I would say. Uh, this is the site that I've received the most business, speaking business over the last four years uh, of all the sites. And uh, so I recommend it and I give you some good stuff here. One thing I'll just say really quickly, whatever site that you are uh, planting your flag on or being active on, just make sure that you're active on it. I want you to audit your digital marketing footprint and any sites that you are not active on, I'm going to allow you to make a choice. Either become active on it, meaning build a following there and uh, create content on there, or delete it. So if you have a Snapchat channel or you have an Instagram page that you're not doing anything with, it may be doing more harm than good to you. A meeting planner, a young meeting planner may check out your Instagram page, see six followers, and, and maybe you know, a little bit of doubt creeps in. You can strategically not be there, that's okay. So on LinkedIn, I hate to see no photo or 27 connections, so make sure you work it. Now here are a couple of best practices on LinkedIn. First of all, have that timeline photo in the background, that like poster sized photo. Show off, that's social proof. Show, the, show yourself speaking to a huge crowd. If you had to negotiate your fee down a little bit, maybe you can get some really high level photography uh, from that event. Uh, and, and, and then you can use that photography for LinkedIn. I'll give you a great resource for these photos. It's called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, Canva. And what you can do is, and it's a free site, and they know the sites. You can say, I'm, I'm putting a photo up on LinkedIn, and it'll know exactly where you can put content and where uh, to organize that timeline photo. And you can do that for LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and so on and so forth. So it's a great site. You'll love it. Uh, make sure that you get to uh, your 500 plus connections. That's really important. So make sure you do that. Uh, I recommend only having your name and maybe uh, your credentials behind it. Again, CSP, CPAE, Hall of Fame, great thing to put up here. Uh, and then your tagline, again, I mentioned, and I, I don't have, didn't have time to put on, but give him a shout out, my buddy Dan Thurman in the back of the room. He has, um, I think, Dan, you have uh, leadership or motivational, I can't remember which one, keynote speaker, and he does a lot of different things, but that's his tagline. And when you search it, on LinkedIn, he's one of the first people to pop up. That's how you rank on Google. So you got to, again, make sure this is your forest phrase. I'm a social media speaker and consultant. Do I talk about other things than social media? Yes, I do. But again, that's what people search for. Okay? So that's really important. And lastly, on this slide, publish posts here. This is where the new place to publish blog posts. Instead of just your blog, I post articles here. And man, I got to tell you, it's a great place for thought leadership. It's a great place for you to be able to create thought leadership and content with your tribe followers. Okay, so publish posts on LinkedIn. A couple more things and we'll wrap up. Uh, this is my summary, my executive summary. I recommend either numbers or bullets because people don't read paragraphs anymore because we're in the ADD gener generation. You know, it's like squirrel. That's how people are these days. So we got to be careful. So bullets or numbers over paragraphs and get video, get multimedia, into your professional or into your executive summary on LinkedIn. And then this is one, one of my favorite ones. Again, I, I give shout outs. I don't like, you know, we always talk about, and I agree, you don't, don't take people's stuff. But if you, if you got something that you loved, um, give them, uh, acknowledge it. So Ford Sakes came to our chapter and he gave this tip. And I've always, I always struggled with this part. And he gave a great best practice for it. So instead of our experience, if your experience beyond being a speaker is pretty weak or it doesn't really, uh, it's not relevant then what I do now, and this is what Ford recommended, is to put your previous engagements as part of your previous experience. So check this out. Right below my current experience is when I got to be the social media keynote speaker for the PGA Tour. And then below that was when I got to do a presentation for the Dallas Cowboys. And that's a picture of me speaking on the Dallas Star. So this goes right below my experience, my current experience, of running my company boot camp. Isn't that better than the fact that I, you know, was a delivery driver for Domino's or whatever I had way down there? So that, do you guys see that? Is anyone doing that by raise of hand? Will you do that in the future? Raise your hand. 
Yeah, good stuff, right? So you can thank Ford on that one. That's a really good tip for you for your previous experience. And then last but not least on LinkedIn is quality recommendations. So I oftentimes, when I go to your LinkedIn, I see that you have recommendations from fellow speakers. And that's good, but it's not great. What I want to see in terms of recommendations are economic buyers. I want to see buying signals. I want to see that, you know, Stephanie came early. She texted me when she arrived, which as a meeting planner really made my day. She um, delivered the goods. She stayed after and answered questions. She even did a follow-up call or whatever. Those are the kind of testimonials that we want to see. Okay, quality over quantity when it comes to testimonials. And then uh, on LinkedIn, in terms of, so that's your profile. In terms of what I'd like to see you do on an active basis is make sure you are sharing an update or a photo, or again, like I said earlier, publishing a post. So creating content on LinkedIn on a weekly, maybe daily basis. But again, this is a top of mind strategy. So your thought leadership goes here because you're connected to all of the economic buyers that you know. And then I also want you to interact with your network. So if a meeting planner posts a really good article, I'll give you one really good tip. I'm with a lot of bureaus and some of which never book me, but one thing that I do to try to stay top of mind is when they post something of value, I will engage with it. It's a nice, we all like that. It's a little feather in our cap, right? So that's really fun to do. Okay, so make sure you're engaging with your uh, prospects and clients. And last but not least, I'll leave you with this one because this is my favorite one. Uh, speakers have made money, a lot of money, off of this little tip that I've been given for the last few years. I hope you use it. I want to hear from you if you use this to, to, to collect business off of, because it just makes my day. And if you want to send me a commission check, then that's fine. But I hate, more than life itself, cold calling. I've always hated it. it, was, it's, it I've been terrible at it. I feel like I'm chewing glass when I have to pick up the phone and call a lead for the first time. So I wanted to find a better way, and this is what I do. So I go to LinkedIn and I use the search bar up here. This is the shortened version. I'll give you a deeper version in my breakout later on. But I do use the search bar here and you can search by city, you can search by industry, you can search by, in this case, I did Speaker Bureau Canada. I just threw it in there. And look what happens here. Um, Gloria up here, Clements, is she here? Or you guys probably know her, small world, whatever, right? Um, but we're not connected. I don't know her. If I wanted to, though, instead of cold calling, look right below. It has a number two. That's what you want to look for, is a number two next to their name. That means you have a mutual connection. That means that Gloria knows someone that I know. So LinkedIn is kind enough to tell me who it is. It's Tammy Evans. Tammy's seen me speak a bunch of times. So I could call up Tammy or email Tammy and say, Tammy, how well do you know Gloria? She's like, oh, I've known her for years. We've done a lot of business together. Why do you ask? Well, I would love if you wouldn't mind connecting me with Gloria. She sends this wonderful email, tells her all these nice things that I might say about myself, but she doesn't believe me because I'm saying it. But because her trusted uh, confidant says it to her, it's a, I turned a cold call into a warm lead. Now, how many of you, by raise of hand, are on LinkedIn? How many of you, by, keep your hand up if you're using the Get Introduced feature, and keep your hand up if you've seen business from it. That's awesome. At least four or five people in the room. Use it and use it consistently. Look for the number two next to their name, and then explore who that mutual connection is, and let that person be the advocate for you. Okay, I'm telling you, I've had, it, may, it warms my heart when I see emails that come through who have done this, and it turned out to be you know, a full fee or a bureau recommendation or something. This is a relationship business, and this is how you build relationships. Uh, we're going to skip that for now, but I'll talk about that in the breakthrough. So in summary, uh, fish where the fish are. Don't get bent out of shape uh, with your website. Make sure that you're updating it every couple years. So it's really important that you're making sure that, that you got your uh, mobile responsive and that you're, uh, you got all your information above the fold. Uh, don't do it all yourself. Get help. So if uh, you're starting out in this business, the couple of sites that I told you about, um, Upwork or Fiverr.com are really helpful. Uh, you can use interns. You know, I have an agency. Uh, there are probably agencies in Canada that you can use to help you. Uh, be creative. This is the way I used to cook hot dogs in, at FSU. And uh, I only say this to tell you that, you know, when you go live or you're posting content, make sure you, you're different and, you know, try to stand above the noise. And uh, keep it simple. Uh, uh, you know, that's one of the most important things I would tell you. And I'll leave you with this quick story. I had a guy 
run up to me at a conference uh, recently, and I hadn't covered Twitter with him yet. And he said, Corey, you did not tell me how to syndicate Twitter to my website. I'm freaking out. He was sweating. He was all frustrated. And I was like, okay, man, calm down, calm down. Tell me about your business. And he said, I sell medical supplies to the elderly. <laughs> and we had sort of this moment. And it was sort of like he looked at me similar to the way I, I look at my dog sometimes, like when we're trying to communicate with each other. I'm like, are you hungry? Do you got to go out? And he was like, we kind of, and we had this moment where we were kind of like looking at each other. And then it just, the light bulb kicked. And he said, do I even need to be on Twitter? And I was like, I don't think you do. It's not part of your business. And he literally skipped back to his seat and he got to cross that one off. Only be on the sites that make sense to your business. I will see you hopefully later on this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.